comes Romero oh, with a pull counter. There the we line. go. We have there our it is. champion, ladies and gentlemen. For most of the decade, the Esports Fight League has showcased the community's best matchups, personalities, and gameplay. UFC 5 is going to bring everything to a new level, and we at the ESL cannot wait to share our plans for UFC 5's launch and beyond. With more and more information about the game coming out, who better than ESFL's very own Romero 17 to break down the new features and balancing we can expect at the top of the competitive scene. Romero has won multiple ESFL championships, including the inaugural ESFL Live Las Vegas event at the HyperX Arena in Vegas, June 2022. Let's hear what he's got to say. What's good, everybody? Romero 17 here, and today we're going to be going over the EA Sports UFC 5 Deep Dive hosted on their channel. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I am a YouTuber of the EA Sports UFC franchise. I have a couple of tutorials dating back all the way back from UFC 3. I am now part of the UFC Design Council with EA Sports alongside Marshall Mind and ESFL President Z Hunter, amongst many other high-quality dudes that I got to meet. And so for those of you who don't know me on top of, uh, you know, regular tutorial stuff in terms of competition, I was the first winner of the UFC ESFL PlayStation belt. I also won the eSports belt hosted live on the UFC Twitch. And I also was able to win the first ever Las Vegas live event competition. So we got a couple of good things cooking here with this deep dive and I can't wait to get into it with y'all. So with this new game, it's coming with a new engine, the Frostbite engine. There's been a little bit of mixed reviews with regards to how well it's going to work. But based on what we've been able to see, you know, they're talking about a new impact system when it comes to the damage with the game. My hope for that is that that's going to encourage more counter striking as opposed to a lot of times in the previous games, you're able to kind of stay in your opponent's face. Your head health obviously matters, your body health obviously matters, but this is going to provide more of an incentive to really watch what you're doing because if these changes with regards to this real impact system actually affects how you need to approach the fight, whether you're going to have to go for a finish if you're really down and your face is battered up and there's supposed to be a, a doctor stoppage incoming or if you're just getting absolutely worked and you can't rely on some busted combo to try to get you in the fight, that's kind of like where I'm hoping for with the strike and with the grappling, I want them to open up the grappling as much as possible. So we're going to go and play the clip here. Welcome to the EA Sports UFC 5 Gameplay Deep Dive. My name is Marshall Mind and today we'll be talking about some brand new features designed to deliver a whole new level of MMA authenticity and immersion to the game. We'll look at features like the real impact system, new striking animations, Doctor stoppages a brand so off rip right we have they're talking about the real impact system they showed a clip of the ground and pound the ground and pound if that real impact system is going to be based on the ground and pound that means that even the ground and pound is going to do more damage when you end up in positions now one thing I never really liked about UFC 4 was you can kind of get somebody in a ground and pound position it would be really difficult to actually finish somebody in a ground and pound position because they were always granted a free reversal if they slip like your first strike or your hook and I always thought that should be restricted to move levels so as they proceed with this next game I really want them to make an adjustment there and with these newer animations I'm big on utility it's nice and pretty if you have a bunch of new animations but their utility is important what I really like in this clip is that the check hook that he used with uh, Jorge Masvidal was able to counter the forward moving you know linear cross so that's that's going to provide some utility. I also like that new body type animation. Brand new exciting submission system and plenty more. And with that, let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about today is the real impact system, which is essentially a catchphrase for the conglomeration of health events, facial injuries, full body hit reactions, overall authentic damage, and the impact they have on a fight. Unlike previous games where injuries to the athletes were mainly superficial, UFC 5 introduces an innovative impact system that accurately reflects the physical toll the athlete undergoes during a match, which influences both the athlete's condition and the ultimate match results. This is demonstrated visually with the all new damage icons. Now, before we get into these icons, I, I can't stress enough just how much more impactful this new damage system is going to be in UFC 5. The few times that I've played against another player, every single time I got cut, it was like, oh my God, you really gotta reevaluate what you're doing. You gotta watch out. In UFC 5, as you guys are gonna see once we start talking about these damage icons in a moment, getting cut, getting damaged, 
it really, really means something and has an impact in the way the fight actually plays out. The vision penalty icon appears when an athlete gets cut in areas of the face where bleeding could lead to visual impairment, like the brows, the eye, the forehead, etc. This leads to a right there, right? He's talking about like certain parts of the body, the brow, the eye, etc., etc., right? If you're getting a cut and an icon appears, that's going to encourage you, the offensive fighter, to keep targeting that cut. Conversely, that it's going to force a person on defense to really focus on protecting that cut. Now, the, the good little baseline between that is that whatever is going to cause a cut is going to... All right, if this guy gets a little bit too overzealous, you have a chance on cutting up probably cutting them up right because short-term stamina is usually probably into damage so if they go crazy trying to finish you once they see a little bit of blood they put themselves at risk to get finished and that's something that i'm really going to like with regards to this damage system to an increase in the amount of damage you take on the affected side while the penalty is active if no further impact occurs to the affected location in 30 seconds the penalty is lifted the penalty is also lifted at the start of a new round the breathing penalty icon appears when an athlete sustains an injury to the nose or mouth. This impact will decrease the short-term stamina. And it's showing that off of the pull counter. A pull counter is done by going back with the right analog stick and you're using the head movement to pull and then inputting across. It's usually done really well against people who are like throwing a lot of looping strikes, whether it be overhands, lead hooks, or even if, if you're really nice with it, you're gonna pull head kicks and whatnot. But following up with like a pull cross and you batter the nose that way, that is a really, really good way because if it's a breathing penalty, that means it's going to have to affect the stamina for sure. Recovery for as long as the penalty is active. If the athlete can protect against subsequent damage to the affected area, the penalty will be lifted in 30 seconds or at the start of a new round. The stun icons are broken down into three different icons. The head stun icon, the body stun icon, and the leg stun icon. The head stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the head. The body stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the body. And the leg stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the leg. The health icons are also broken down into three different icons. The heart icon, the arm health icon, and the leg health icon. These icons authentically represents the effect a submission attempt can have on an athlete. The heart okay, this is big, right? So with this new grappling system, they're gonna have these affect your, your, your limbs, it's gonna affect your breathing penalty. So if you're somebody who has like a grappler and whatnot, right? And you're really trying to wear on somebody who's a really good striker. In UFC 3, it was damage oriented, right? You can get an arm triangle and it would like damage the head a lot. UFC 4, it did ta target the stamina, but nothing too crazy. But if you're going to be able to not only target the submission, right, and I see like the bar there too, but you're also going to be able to affect the short term stamina and the recovery on the ground, that's going to lead to even more transitions to finish the fight and, and really plead for your case. Heart icon appears when a player loses a chunk of their maximum stamina due to a deep choke. The goal here is to accurately represent how chokes, especially deep ones, can negatively affect an athlete's overall stamina. The arm health icon is meant to signal a loss in maximum block health due to a deep arm submission. Whether it's an arm bar or a kimura, overextending the arm realistically leads to a reduction in blocking. Okay, so that's huge, right? So my, from a strategic point of view, you could see people start to start using more of a hybrid of fighters who can not only strike, but they can also grapple. I said grappler, but grapple, right? And more importantly, have like an edge towards joint submissions, right? Because if you want to be able to strike, you know, the block meter is very important. I'm sure there's going to definitely be some tuning with how much drain happens because I can definitely see that getting to a point where people are going to only fish for like these type of submissions to affect the block and then boom, you're done. But um, it's a definitely, uh, definitely a, a nice change in the right direction. Ability and UFC 5 represents this authentically. The leg health icon signals a loss in permanent leg health when a player survives a deep leg lock. Leg locks, of course, are some of the most potent submissions an athlete can endure. So whether it's a deep heel hook or a calf slicer, surviving will So yeah, I think that's kind of like a big thing too, because in UFC 4, 
I, I've been big on using the submission system there because of the mini game as more of a staging position. Like one of the ones I did to kind of help me win a UFC 4 esports title against the Bathing Ash was it was the, the Bulldog Choke. And then with it, I knew within the fourth stage of that Bulldog Choke, I'd be able to cancel. I think third or fourth one, I'd be able to cancel that. Or if it ended there, I'd be able to end up in half guard to go attack an arm triangle or be able to go past the side control and then attack the Kimura from there. So now that people aren't going to be unscathed from the sub attempt, of course the sub attempts tend to score, but not even damage wise that these sub attempts are affecting that, that is huge. Will not leave the athlete unscathed, and UFC 5 authentically represents this reality. The next thing we'll take a look at is Dr. Stoppages. For the first time in the EA Sports UFC series, the Dr. Stoppage will now be another viable way for players to end the match. The Dr. Stoppage icon will appear initially as a result of any facial injury, not including injury to the mouth. At first, the icon appears yellow, but a subsequent impact is received on the affected area, the icon will appear more red. The more red the icon becomes, the closer the ref is to halting the match briefly and requesting a doctor check. If the doctor examines the injury and determines it is not severe enough to warrant a stoppage, he will exit the cage and the match will continue. However, if he examines the injury and determines that it is... So with this doctor stoppage system, I think that's definitely going to help because one of the biggest core complaints we've had in the community is that there's too many knockdowns and fights. Now, from a gaming perspective, oh, it might sound kind of crazy. Oh, yeah, this guy came back from uh, seven knockdowns and it was able to get at the finish. I mean, that stuff is kind of cool from a game sense, but we're playing an MMA game and we wanted to be able to authentically replicate that. And it can almost seem like a get out of jail free card if you know every single time that you get knocked down you can just mash the up kick button and unless the game stops you for with that input from getting them off of you you can always survive that knockdown and i think that with the doctor stoppage it's going to move things into the right direction to where you really have to be careful now with the doctor stoppage a couple positions that come into mind for those who play competitive ufc positions like side of control which are already as a, as a wrestler myself feel like it's too strong because to maintain position right in, a, in the side control you can't have both the ability to do damage and to still be able to hold them down when you strike in that position you're you're breaking the base that you've maintained in order to you know in, in order to like, you know strike them right and that's going to create the space that they need to do whatever they need to do to hip out and escape currently since ufc 3 it's never never really worked but that side control has always been one of the most busted positions and they're going to have to do a heavy nerf in that position whether it be how much stamina gets drained or the denial whether it be the damage that are done from those little short elbows because you should be as the player in side control you should be having to have an incentive to try to go to knee on belly. You should have an incentive to try to go to crucifix. You should have a reason to try to go to mount because that position right there is not enough to win you a fight. That's the way that it is right now on UFC 4. So that's gonna we're gonna have to keep that in mind as uh, you know they're talking about doctor stoppages and everything else of that nature. Is indeed significant enough. He will signal to the ref and the match will end. The introduction of Dr. Stoppages to UFC 5 is just another way that the game truly delivers an authentic mixed martial arts experience. But it also adds another layer to gameplay. Being defensively sound has never been more important, and because of this, there has been some significant enhancements to the core defensive tools in the game. Footwork, blocking, head movement, and lunges have all received significant upgrades resulting in a substantial improvement in their reliability for defensive maneuvers. Now, this is an area that a lot of players definitely complained about in UFC 4, right? Like pressure is too strong, block breaking is too strong, being defensively sound in UFC 4 is not as easy as it's supposed to be. And don't get me wrong, in UFC 5, when you run into a player that knows exactly what they're doing, you can definitely still get run down with strikes. But as we start talking about these new defensive tools in UFC 5, and how they've been upgraded, how they've been buffed. Once you master these and once you start using them as intended, you're going to notice you'll have a lot more success in UFC 5 than you did.
Well, a couple things come to mind there, gameplay-wise, right? We're talking about handling aggression. I've never been a fan of uh, a game rewarding people for free defense. Like, defense is something that you need to really work on. And I think by now, okay, those are great changes with regards to the lunges, the head movement, the stamina, cost being reduced in those. I think that's really, really good. Although, something that's pretty clear for me in these clips, EA still needs to have a lot of work done with regards to a couple of sliding to make up for distance i really think that they need to tone that down if they can't remove it they need to tone that down exponentially because that's really going to make more drastic changes in the striking because i've never been a fan of like you know somebody be able to really have a fast forward moving two forward moving strikes cover at the same speed when there's no conservation you know there's conservation momentum that has to happen you know in real life if you try doing something like that you're going to fall flat on your face and it's something that they definitely need to do especially with um these forward move, like forward moving strikes in general. Now with the full work bus, that's gonna help out exponentially because now you're gonna have to really focus on cage cutting. And cage cutting, not a lot of people know this, but when you're just holding forward on the left stick and the person's moving laterally, it's really hard to kind of cut them off. But if you start to move with them using the left stick, it makes it easier for you to cut them off and trap them to the to the cage. Now it doesn't work. I'd say that the cage cutting stuff also needs a little bit of work. I'd say that maybe something can happen if you bump into the cage. That would be a great additional feature. But if that's not going to be the case, that's going to be my word of advice for y'all. Like, if you guys are going to have to cut off the footwork of somebody who has higher level footwork, you want to kind of, like, do short steps and follow them along those lines and make them punish, make them get punished incrementally as opposed to trying to just chase them with combinations because this is going to help defense out exponentially and you're gonna have to be really smart where you're going to be trying to win rounds here means players will be able to use them a bit more freely compared to ufc4 and let's not forget about footwork the significance of the footwork stat has been amplified in ufc5 specifically when it comes to locomotion athletes with a high footwork stat will move noticeably faster and athletes with low footwork stats will move slower so if your goal is to operate from the outside and be slick and run circles around your opponent, this will be a much more viable strategy in UFC 5. Now, this topic of defense has always been a nagging issue in the EA Sports UFC community, and I really wanted to dive a bit deeper into this just in case I missed something, which is why I sat down with Eves Gomez, an EA Sports UFC developer who, by the way, used to be a game changer. Some of you probably already know who this is. He explained to us a little bit deeper in regards to what we've already talked about, right? With the head movement, the lunges, the locomotion. He goes a little bit deeper and not only explains to us what they did, but also why they did it. What was the logic behind why they made those decisions that they made? So here's Eve's talking about these changes. All right, so can you talk about how vulnerability is going to affect head movement in UFC 5? The frames part of it is just the first part, like the first buff. And it was also buff regarding the stamina cost. It now costs a lot less across the board. And the vulnerability was decreased and the mitigations were increased. We also added mitigation to when you try to dodge sideways against the frontal attack and it still catches you. So if you're trying to dodge a jab but you don't get out of the way in time, it will still grant you a little bit of vulnerability because you're like you're slipping out of the way. So it's like the punch is glancing off your face. All right, so earlier when you said frames, are, are you saying that fighters with higher head movement stats will now have access to more evasive properties, which will allow them to evade shots a lot easier than say UFC 4? Very slightly. Uh, it, the, it was both. Okay, so frame-wise, he's talking about frames. With um, he's saying that like as your stamina gets lower too, you're not going to be penalized too bad with the head movement. I'm also noticing that bar is kind of like it's a pretty big stamina bar right there. So head movement gets buffed stamina across the board. Now the thing is, what they're gonna have to tune is the stamina drain on punches off of their whiff. And I think that needs to be adjusted a little bit more too. Because if they're going to buff the head movement there too, we'll have to see how much of a drain they're going to have on punches. Because right now I can assume they're going to buff the punch drain. Well, not buff, decrease the punch drain on whiffs. Because, well, if they buffed it for head movement, it's going to result in a, well, we don't want people gassing out with like the first 10 strikes they throw. So that's going to get increased. But 
we're gonna have to have it to where the punch drain in general it needs to drain something like something has to go if somebody's being really inefficient with their shots now remember Every fighter in this game is a professional fighter, right? And what stops people from throwing volume in general is a deterrent. Your counter striking is a deterrent. The strikes you land is a deterrent from them doing so. But I definitely would say that another deterrent is if it may properly just put a better tax on punches. Kicks already suffer a big penalty in general, so it makes it hard to have a not hard to have a unique style of people who really kick a lot. And that's something that I want to see them change a bit. But definitely for the punches, it needs to get tuned a bit. Because already when you have high move levels, the stamina cost is reduced by like 20%. So if you already have high uh, level moves, the stamina like definitely needs to be catered to where you're going to be more likely to use those higher level moves as opposed to the lower level moves. It will still grant you a little bit of vulnerability because you're like you're slipping out of the way. So it's like the punch is glancing off your face. All right, so earlier when you said frames, are, are you saying that fighters with higher head movement stats will now have access to more evasive properties, which will allow them to evade shots a lot easier than, say, UFC 4? Very slightly. Uh, it, the, it was buffed across the board by one frame. The low end is not as low as before, so a fighter with a bad head movement stat won't be as slow. And as the fighters get tired throughout the fight, they don't get chunks of slowness added to them yeah but overall the timing of it is slightly faster and varies more granularly and what about with lunges when it comes to vulnerability has that been reduced increased like what are we going to see in, in ufc 5 when it comes to that when you lunge away from a strike you take less damage what about when you lunge directly into a strike are we still going to have vulnerability with that has that been increased has that been reduced that gives you vulnerability which has been decreased yeah it was a bit much yeah it was like maybe the most common way of getting like a flash kill you can see so with animations being more important with like the strikes new strikes and whatnot this is where i'm talking about with utility because if the strikes blend if the animations blend well if you guys are familiar with the franchise right you can fake faint with r2 right or like the right trigger button whatever you guys use on xbox right you can faint, and a lot, the, a lot of the issues is that the faints didn't really sell as much as they really should, right? Now, if they blended these newer animations properly, these animations are going to sell better, and it's going to help set up better, because you get a lot of people that kind of fuzzy block, which is just holding L2, R2, you know, back and forth, trying to get free checks and whatnot, and if you're really able to mess with their head with fakes, that's going to sell them, and you can time them when their head is health is like... At a certain point, this is going to be really, really, really good step in the right direction. Match though, and in UFC 5, going on the offense has never felt better. UFC 5 introduces brand new animations for punches, kicks, elbows, and knees. To talk about a few, the new leg kick animation is beautiful, and the knees are so realistic and powerful looking. The new pivot left hook animation will come in handy when dealing with pressure and the new front kick to the body animation is snappy and beautiful. But that's not all. With the power of next generation graphics, visual cues as well as hit reactions showing just how impact so that's just not animation talking that's also talking about like when it makes impact with the fighter so sometimes fighters can literally just kind of like take a shot and it wouldn't move them at all you know that's a grown-ass leg hitting you and you're not really feeling much impact for it but if that if that's this is implemented properly this is um it's gonna I wonder if move levels are going to affect how effective a stun is going to be if somebody tries to block a kick I think I want to see how they're going to affect like the block frames and stuff when you block certain kicks versus somebody else you know blocking a Diego Sanchez kick even though it is still a kick and it's still shin making connecting to form it's not going to be the same as blocking a kick from somebody like Rafael Fasid, right so oh, I gotta see where he is going there C5 has also revamped striking controls to be more dynamic giving players a lot more control over basic strikes, advanced strikes, as well as combinations. Unlike in UFC 4, where you had to press two buttons simultaneously to perform a strike as basic as an uppercut, in UFC 5, it is as simple as holding the right bumper and pressing either square or triangle for the lead and rear uppercuts. A new dedicated spin input has also been introduced to the game. 
And so rather than having to remember a multitude of button combinations for different spinning attacks, the X and circle buttons pressed together will always result in a spin. And when you pair that with another button input, like circle for example, your fighter will perform a turning sidekick to the body. So that means that, so for, that might go over a couple people's head, right? Before you can always, you have like an input for a specific spin, depending on your stance, you have to switch it to X or circle. Now, whatever it is, it's going to stay constant with this, right? So if I'm pressing this X and circle together, right? If I'm pressing these two, I'd have to immediately press circle it after. So it'd be like, boom, 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 right? If I'm gonna go for a spinning back fist, say it would be like triangle or something, right? Because of the punch inputs it would be the x and circle here and i'm sure anything modifier wise would probably have to be like say x circle and then r1 in, in circle right now with that type of change it may seem a bit jarring for most but i think that's going to be a really good change because if you get somebody if you guys have played ranked or you guys play even quick fight right and certain things i don't use this word too often but you know spamming or whatnot right somebody's going for like this busted spinning sidekick over and over again. Part of why it's so easy to do that is because, well, you know that the input's always going to be L1, R1, and X, and you can just kind of keep going that and you mix it up with the jab. That alone, like trying to like do all that and then trying to go X and circle and this at a time and you mess up that timing of that input, it's going to gear that towards a more skill-based type of thing. Where like if you can really pair together the spins together that well, then you really earned it. And of course, if they fixed all those spins, that's going to be really, really good. The button input to initiate a clinch has also changed, and it's a change that I personally really appreciate. It now maintains a uniformity with the takedown input, which enhances the overall experience. In UFC 5, triggering a clinch is as simple as simultaneously pressing square and X. But that's so for those of you who play UFC 4. And I that's basically the old uppercut inputs are now the new clinch input so before what you used to do with the clinch input right it's a r1 and then you did that or whatever now you can do the old lead uppercut input and that's going to result in a clinch and if you're going to go for a takedown instead of it being like you know you're holding square holding triangle you go l2 and it'll be like the old uppercut input it's not all that was done to the clinch and I definitely had to find out from Eves if anything has been done to improve the clinch from UFC 4 because I know I'm not the only one that's curious about this. A lot of players who had issues with the clinch because let's be honest, man, it was a sore spot in UFC 4. A lot of those same players are going to be very curious. What was done? How was it improved? What changes are we going to see that will make our quality of life a lot better in UFC 5 in regards to the clinch? So here is Eves giving us some insight into what was done to the clinch in UFC 5. Yeah, so we did a few things. The main thing is that it is easier to prevent people from clinching you by striking them. This one frustrating thing is that, okay, you're gonna clinch me, I'm just gonna punch out of it. But in UFC 4, almost always you would punch them and they will clinch you through it as an exchange. Exchanges into the clinch can still happen, but if you're punching someone with a straight attack, we figured that it would make sense that they that should be the thing that would kind of push their face away and not let them clinch you. So any jab with straight will nullify a clinch attempt. Now, furthermore, any... Basically, the one-twos now, if you do that against somebody trying to clinch you, is going to interrupt. It's basically going to serve as a striking denial, which is really good because we've complained about that in the community that people kind of muffle through the clinch now. We've had fighters like, say, Ben Askren be able to kind of punch way this way through because the guy had no striking defense whatsoever and kind of each strikes to get into a clinching position but now there's going to be more of a danger because he's saying that you lose the advantage that you would have had so if the person goes from eating like say an uppercut and a hook still clinches you through gets a successful clinch attempt and the sub person starts to strike at them right and they're going to try and throw like a knee or something to try to convert it into the tie clinch it's not going to work because you've already lost that advantage head health wise and you're probably going to get stunned out of the clinch anyways. And we made more subtle changes to the flow of when you're striking someone as you're trying to escape the clinch. For a specific window, they can't block when they're actually exiting, right? That is still possible, but it is harder to do now and it is especially harder from the cage single under position. But the, the defensive striking the clinch is generally more powerful than it seems. The truth is that if people clinch you through your strike, you actually have the upper hand. If you continue to strike, it will 
take them out of what they're trying to do. Like you will, it will interrupt the need that they try to throw you and stuff like that. Now let's delve into what I consider to be the most exhilarating transformation in EA Sports UFC 5 the seamless submission mechanics. For the first time in EA Sports UFC history, submissions are now performed without relying on a mini game. In earlier iterations like UFC 4, triggering a submission, be it a joint lock or a chokehold, necessitated engaging in a mini game to secure or counter the move. This element was somewhat detached from the core grappling system. However, in UFC 5, this dynamic has been seamlessly integrated, making a groundbreaking evolution. Allow me to explain. Upon initiating a submission in UFC 5, for example, a guillotine, you'll have two choices. You can choose to force your opponent to submit by crossing both feet behind their back and squeezing, leading to a tap, or you can choose to advance to the mounts, a more advantageous position. And although you gave up the submission, you secured another favorable position. As the attacker, the direction of your inputs will always remain the same regardless of the submission. Up to submit and down to advance to another dominant position. As the player who's defending, the directions of your input will also always remain the same regardless of the submission. Left to escape and also right to escape. Oh. That means it doesn't matter if the dude hit an armbar, doesn't matter if he hit a Kamara, doesn't mean it matter if he hits a triangle choke. It is always going to be right stick and up to deny the submission, okay? So when you're playing this new game, it's going to be right stick and up to deny the transition. And then the bottom one is going to be, you know, right stick and down, you know, flicking down in that direction when they're advancing positions, going to be down. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to start to recognize what is the animation tell that tells me that they're going to try and finish the submission and what is the animation tell that they're going to go in advanced position. Who's defending? The directions of your input will also always remain the same regardless of the submission. Left to escape and also right to escape. Now I understand the potential worry that this new submission system could oversimplify submission and make them too easy. Well, rest assured, the team accounted for this concern because in tandem with the regular HUD displaying head, body, and leg health, an additional gauge now shows your submission health. Depending on the strength of the submission, your athlete's submission defense stats, as well as your current stamina level, it might require as many as three submission attempts to completely deplete your submission health. And when that happens, the submission... So, at first, I was kind of apprehensive to, like, the whole stuff with the bar. Because I'm like, ah, oh, man, it gives them a free escape. But if you're ending up in a better position after you attack the submission, and this is going to be based on the fighter's submission defense with how much gets taken off, I'm kind of all for it. Uh, I've, I've been... Uh, at first, I was kind of apprehensive about it. I'm like, eh, I don't know. And But being that stamina plays a uh, part, obviously grapple advantage is going to play a part, and the timing, where you get the sub. Because uh, definitely certain submission entries should not matter, should not be as strong as other submission entries. Like if you hit it from a very, not low percentage, you know, low percentage, uh, low percentage position, then yeah, the sub, the sub is going to come out a lot weaker than a sub then. If you were to go for like an arm bar from say full guard, not to say that's not a high percentage of position where people have gotten submissions from, but a uh, arm bar attempt from mount versus an arm bar attempt from like the full guard in MMA, like you see some fighters like after they beat up a, a dude in mount and then they attack a submission, the submission comes much easier versus somebody who's been taking say damage from a full guard or the guy's postured up and then they're attacking the submission there because they're in a much more defensive position. And that's how I'd like to see them approach this with the ground is instantaneous. It is important to note that despite this protective measure, one-shot submissions remain plausible in UFC 5. These occurrences are exceptional and typically happens when a player has severely mismanaged your stamina, granting the attacker a substantial stamina advantage upon initiating the submission. When it comes to submissions in UFC 5... It's really a good thing too, now that they made that switch from the mini games to this because I don't even be fair with y'all, you know, there, there's some submissions I've escaped that I've had, like, no business escaping, and, you know, 
you want to make it more skill based on one end yeah like I, I'm also I'm all big on skill and whatnot but if you do mismanage your stamina to a certain point and you're going against somebody who has a really good fighter that's strong in those areas and you make that mistake and put yourself in that position and I don't really have too much of an objection against that now I still don't want to see you know, say you're going against, it's like Connor versus like, say like Makashev or something. And yeah, he gets your stamina down to uh, zero short-term stamina. But you're going to tell me that his arm is going to be at the same level as efficiency as say somebody like Makashev. I would hope there's going to be a difference there with regards to the submission offense. Stamina is king, so make sure to manage yours. Contextual submissions have also been expanded in UFC 5. If you find yourself in sight control and you try to escape to half guard by framing and bridging up, be careful because your opponent could very well counter that with an arm triangle. If you find yourself entangled in a rubber guard and you try to recover the full guard, also be careful because you could find yourself fighting off an arm bar. UFC 5 introduces a multitude of contextual submissions that once mastered imbue the ground. That is very, very clean. Like that submission that Gilbert Burns hit from rubber guard into an armbar is absolutely like disgusting. That makes that position much more dangerous. Because a rubber guard was already a dangerous thing, but now if considered the, the real impact system, you can be throwing elbows in that position against your opponent, and now you have the threat of the submission there. Oh man, this is. Ooh. Ground game with a heightened sense of authenticity. Adding to the authenticity of the ground game, the ground and pound system has also been revamped. All new ground and pound animations from straight punches to hooks, including high impact elbows to the head and body, accurately captures the visceral reality of ground and pound. And unlike past iterations of the game, when you stop the opponent on the ground, the reaction they give you is believable. So we've talked about the brand new submission system, we've talked about contextual submissions, we've talked about the brand new ground and pound, but I'm sure a lot of people still have questions in regards to the core ground game, right? Like how is it different from UFC 4? What else was done to it in UFC 5? And once again, I sat down with Eves Gomez. Now, same with all this, there's going to be a time, but what I said earlier is that those those early portion periods of like the game dropping is when there's going to be a lot of patches, a lot of tunes everything along those lines so it's very important that EA is on point with listening to the community we're making the right type of changes right you don't want to listen to the guy that says oh this is broken and this is busted but he has no idea how to do something you want to listen to people that have tested every single avenue of what's available and have done the correct measures to do so so we're gonna just skip ahead here to about 1811 Right, we're going to stick over to uh, Mr. Eves. Team actually plays on the ground. If you have pretty much a whole round on the ground, your stamina, like your permanent stamina consumption should be similar to if you have a whole round strike. The ground won't be like a refuge of almost no stamina cost anymore. With the new submission system. You don't understand what he means there. So is he saying he that you won't be able to, you actually be affected by denials on the ground? You and it's going to affect your long-term stamina overall. You like that's what, what does he mean by that? Like that that's why I'm, I'm hoping that you actually are able to kind of drain your opponent out. I'd obviously want this to be balanced though. Like positionally speaking, I don't want to see where you can fish for one position and then you just stick to denying them there in the street. That'd be a couple steps backwards. So maybe he means the other thing, right? Where you're on the ground, you have to be really smart there, and if you're defending, just try to stamina is not going to be too punishing if you do get the submissions, seamless submissions. We added a lot of depth, but we didn't want it to be intimidating for new players or players who are starting to grapple. You can play grapple assists within submissions. It all flows like for a casual player, like it's pick up and play. You're not going to play at a high level, but you're not going to get stuck. Now there's no more mini game. And when you're using grapple assist, grapple assist just continues to work as you get into the actual submission. You can use the submission intent to just keep going and finish the opponent. If you're defending, just trying to get up, you can keep just doing that. Or if you're trying to ground a pound, you can escape a submission right into a ground and pound position to punish the opponent for doing it. Do you try to submit you? You can even, as a defender, use the submission intent to counter submission to one of your own if your fighter can do that. A lot of the fanciest things in this system 
actually happens a lot. You get to see a lot of cool animations because you're often sort of, especially if you have two beginners playing with grapple assist, you're constantly racing. And when you racing, what he means by this is that if I'm holding the right stick, right, and I see you transition, I'm going to also, whatever option I have available, I'm going to try to hit that transition too. So to give you guys an example, if the person on, say, top half guard, and usually this is how it kind of works. The guy on um, bottom has a really good, like, say, bottom game or whatnot, or better, just better move levels on the ground, right? And the guy on top has lower short-term stamina and tries to transition the mount. And then you start to go up, right? With this, uh, you try to go up on the right stick. You're actually going to be able to have a chance to win a contextual transition and say either get backside, backside. It depends on the move level of your wrestling or jiu-jitsu transitions or whatnot. But that's going to play a huge, huge part in this game too with regards to the submission system. So what he's going to be alluding to here is that you're not screwed if you get denied. You can actually try to race the submission attacks because it's a part of the same system. You're racing, like you know that that's when you see the coolest stuff, right? We get into an armbar, like immediately we just, you try to escape, I try to finish. We go into a belly down armbar, you flip and then end up inside your leg. All of these crazy stuff, they're the coolest stuff, actually happens a lot when you're playing as a beginner. In your own pace, you can start to explore depths and changing your controls and so on and so forth. And there are more, more changes to the ground. So it was almost impossible to get to back mount and back flat positions because when you're doing it, the people could just roll for free and end up back sitting, which is a little less dominant for you. They cannot do that for free anymore. If so what he's talking about there is that people would always force the back sitting transition to happen. You try to go to back mount, and it was virtually impossible to get to back mount because people would just roll, force back sitting. So it would lead to a very, very boring cycle of back sitting. So you pretty much would have to be forced to play a campy type of game where you'd be in backside and then back sitting, back and forth. Now, if you try to go and do this contextual transition without trying to, uh, without having a stamina advantage, you're gonna be put in a very bad place. If they have a stamina advantage, they can do that, just like in US4. If they don't, they can't. So now, there is a new contextual transition there for when you're trying to get back mount and they're trying to roll. It's a brand new result. I won't say what it is, but it's not back sitting. Now, it should be much more viable to get to the actual back mount and back flat and use the submissions from there, which are supposed to be very juicy, and they are. With the real impact system, intuitive striking controls, improved defensive tools, and all new submission mechanics, EA Sports UFC 5 offers the most immersive, authentic, and exciting mixed martial arts gameplay experience. I mean, that's as, that's as great as it can be. You know, it's a good introductory breakdown. Of course, we're gonna have to look to see some more tutorials, some more strategies, I'm gonna have plenty of that on my own channel. I'd like to thank ESFL Gaming for allowing me to kind of provide a little bit of insight on this deep dive. So when the game drops, or maybe a little bit beforehand, I'll have some tutorials on my end, helping you guys with catching up to the curve for EA Sports UFC 5. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. We're at 17, I'm out. Oh. Big rock, here comes Romero, oh. but a pull counter. There we go, we have a champion, ladies and gentlemen.